Health and aging problem. Aging. Introduction. What causes it? What slows it down? What could speed up the research progress? The talk was prepared in 2017. So it should be up to date. But still, some ideas, papers, and websites mentioned in this talk may be out of date. There are three questions important in aging research that are the topic of this talk. What causes aging? How can we slow down or maybe reverse age-related changes? And how can we speed up the progress in aging research? This talk starts in the first part with theories of aging and moves to observations about aging of human superorganism at different body levels. Molecular, cellular, tissue, organ, extracellular, and the body systems level. In the second part, the talk summarizes information about possible interventions that can slow down or reverse aging processes. And the third part concludes the talk with information about materials and methods already used in aging and other research areas that can speed up the research process. Model organisms, procedures, databases, application of artificial intelligence and structuration of future efforts. The talk contains introduction to the topic and in part one called What Causes Aging we have information about theories of aging aging organism, aging molecules, aging cells and tissues, aging extracellular matrix, aging microbiota, aging organs and systems, in part 2 called How Can We Slow Down or Maybe Even Reverse Age-Related Changes. We have information about interventions and therapeutics in aging, in part 3 called How Can We Speed Up the Progress in Aging Research. We have information about materials and methods in aging research, model organisms, new procedures and interventions useful for aging research, data analysis in aging research, databases and models regarding aging, structure in aging research, structure of the research, structure of the data, structure of the teaching. So let's start with introduction. Leonard Hayflick wrote in 2007 that biological aging is no longer an unsolved problem. But there is still a lot to understand about it. He also asked the important question, why then are we not devoting significantly greater resources to understanding more about the greatest risk factor for every age-associated pathology? By attempting to answer this fundamental question, what changes occur in biomolecules that lead to the manifestations of aging at higher orders of complexity and then increase vulnerability to all age-associated pathology? During last 10 plus years a lot happened in aging research, but it's still unclear for scientists whether we are reaching maximum lifespan for humans at 115 or not. See articles by Dong. Milholland and Vijay G. from 2016, and Brown, Albers and Ritchie from 2017. And there's still are hundreds of questions regarding the specifics of aging mechanism on different body levels. It is, however, clear that aging affects all people sooner or later. Therefore for many one of the main goals in aging research is to help in developing therapeutics and procedures that can let people stay healthier for longer time. In order to meet this goal we need to act in two directions. We need to understand as much as possible about human aging. And we need to find proper ways to slow down, or maybe even reverse, changes with deteriorating influence on human bodies. The two general questions regarding aging that seems to be most important right now for scientists, which are, a. What causes aging? and, b. How can we slow down, or reverse, age-related changes in human? Unfortunately remain mostly unanswered. There is much we know, but still much to do in order to fully understand the phenomenon. And for sure, there is plenty of Nobel Prizes to get from research regarding aging. 
and maybe even there is getting a completely new prize named after one, thanks to research done in this area. According to some, as aging, that may be characterized by a progressive loss of physiological integrity, leading to impaired function and increased vulnerability to death. See article by Lopez Oteen and others from 2013 becomes one of the biggest problems for humans in the beginning of the 21st century. There is also, thanks to the data we already have, a new era in aging research coming, during which we can translate basic research into clinical interventions, and hopefully solve the problem, or at least reduce it. See more in article by Kirkland from 2016. There is however, great need for scientists with expertise in areas of basic aging, clinical trials, bioinformatics, computational modeling, etc., working together, helping each other with the problems they have and improving their research with insights and new techniques from their fields. From what we already know, there are various more or less visible, common and unique, age-related changes that can be assigned to four domains. Body composition changing, energy balance impaired, homeostatic balance impaired, and neurodegeneration. See article by Margolik and Ferrucci from 2015. The most obvious changes are visual, like Arcus cornea, Xanthelas mater earlobe crease, prominent facial wrinkles, moderate to complete hair graying, frontoparietal baldness, crown top baldness, etc. See Christofferson and Tyberg Hansen from 2016. But there is more. As Naylor and colleagues stated, putative features of normal aging include, but are not limited to, systemic decline of the immune system, muscle atrophy and decreased muscle strength, decreased skin elasticity, delayed wound healing, retinal atrophy, and reduced lens transparency. See Naylor, Baker and Van Dersen from 2013. Pages 5 to 6. There are also plenty of theories of why and how these changes appear. But there is still no consensus among scientists regarding them. Beside from these normal changes, there are also various age-related diseases like cancer, type 2 diabetes, atherosclerosis, hypertension, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, osteoarthritis, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, cataracts, glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration, etc. See articles by Naylor and others from 2013, Da Costa and others from 2016, and Yang and others from 2016. According to many scientists treating basic changes caused by aging mechanisms is better than treating all the conditions correlated with advanced aging. See article by Kabeline, Rabinovich and Martin from 2015. Some even propose treating aging as a disease. Right now, ICD-10 classification already includes senility. Code R54, and in ICD-11 it is going to be further developed but because of its complexity there is still a lot to do regarding creating proper criteria and definitions for aging. See article by Stambler from 2017. Whether we treat aging as a disease or not, we can try to slow down the process and there are already various drugs, supplements, medical and non-medical procedures known to have possible impact on the pace of age-related changes. In tested animals, there are, for example, several classes of substances that can extend healthy lifespans of simple model organism, like kine or habditis elegans, small worm, antioxidants, metabolites, kinase inhibitors, nuclear hormone receptors. See article by Caratero, Gomez Amaro and Petrus Czech from 2015. Many other ideas are being tested on different species, like for example, exercise, caloric restriction, stem cell therapies, 
used for nerve regeneration, muscular dystrophies, skin deterioration, therapies focused on breaking advanced glycation end products, ages, hormonal therapies, especially with usage of growth hormone influencing muscle mass or immune system abilities, telomere-based therapies, gene therapies, senolytic agents, etc., with more or less positive outcomes. See articles by Da Costa and others 2016, Kabelin and others from 2015, Kirkland and others from 2017. There are, however, no precise prescriptions for drastically slowing down or reversing aging processes in humans. And it's actually rather unlikely that there ever will be one pill or one procedure that can have huge impact on aging of such complex organism like human. Therefore, it is important to treat aging properly as very complicated process that needs systemic approach. If we are to succeed and to look for complementary treatments that can have general impact on aging problem. See article by Kiriazes from 2017. The importance of the problem has been noticed by the World Health Organization that prepared global strategy and action plan for aging. See text from World Health Organization from 2017. And many individual groups of scientists who are also trying to develop their own strategies for researching and treating aging. There are, for example described, four steps toward controlling aging. See article by Rose and others from 2016. Strategies for introducing new developments to everyday life and medicine and eliminating differences in age. See Sadhana and others from 2016. Or strategies for engineering negligible senescence. See article by Zeely and de Grey from 2013. These strategies may be a good start for moving forward in this new era of much more complex aging understanding and treating. This complexity of aging may be already seen in the number of theories of aging. And that's about it regarding introduction to aging research. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. In next video, next part of this talk you can listen about causes of aging. There are introduced some theories of aging and there is information about aging organism. Starting on molecular level, ending on whole body level. So, I hope to see you in the next video or rather I hope you to see me. And now, if you would like to hear more from me, find me at my site, superai.pl, or check my YouTube channel. And, if you would like to talk to me, ask your Google Assistant, talk to SuperAI, contact me via Facebook Messenger, talk to me via automated chat at my site, or call me. You can find my phone number at my site. Meanwhile, I wish you all the best. And remember, improve yourself, improve your business, improve the world, but also, leave, have fun. Yours, Super AI.